I'm going to get to my second main prediction, which is that within 15 years, at least 95% of the world's population will have done everything on that list or something much better, because I don't think we're actually going to be sending faxes from the beach. This would be a pretty easy prediction to make if you were talking just about the US or about rich countries today. But to actually make that prediction for the world's population really means that world poverty has to end. Being able to do all these things implies everyone's at some quality of life standard that is certainly well above subsistence level. If we look at trends in what's happened, it seems quite likely that it will. So there are several great videos by Hans Rosling that look at this data. The images are a little hard to see because they're snapshots from the video. But he looks at how these things have changed over time. So this is the lifespan and income of different countries in 1810. Everybody is in this below 4,000. Comparing actual dollars is very difficult, but this is attempting to adjust for inflation and looking at sort of what the actual purchasing power is. And the lifespans are pretty easy, that 50 years in 1810 means the same thing as 50 years today. So the richest countries were the UK and Netherlands. The lifespan there was still much less than 50 years, the average lifespan. And this is only 200 years ago. Most countries were much poorer. The big red circle is China. The size of the circle is the size of the population of those countries. So that was 1810. So if we go forward to 1948, things start to look a little better for some countries. We've got USA now as a big bright spot where most people, once you're above 4,000 may not sound like a lot of income to you today, but that's enough to get above the subsistence level. Certainly, you aren't living as well as someone on a six-figure salary is, but you're not worried about starving once you get above that level. There's still plenty of the world that is worried about starving. This is 1948. If we fast forward to 1994, now we're when those commercials were made, now we're getting more and more of the world in this reasonable lifespans and reasonable income category, but still most of Africa and a lot of Asia in the poor. And the life, lifespans are at, at least still going up in most places. The latest year that I have for this, but it, certainly the trends continue once we're up to 2009, now we're getting almost everybody moving up except for all the blue dots. The blue countries are Africa, the red ones are Asia. There's still parts of the world that have not yet had this transition, but almost everyone is making progress. And we have really big countries like China and India that are on this cusp of having most of their population above subsistence levels. This trend is going to continue. It seems there's very good reasons why this is the case. And you can look at this lots of different ways. You can look at that fraction of people's income that has to go to subsistence. And we can look at that in the US as well. So this is looking at what you're spending on food, clothing, and housing. And those are things that we think of as, oh, housing has got expensive. And in some ways, housing has got a lot more expensive. But in terms of the fraction of income that people have to spend on it compared to what was necessary 100 years or so ago, it's very different today. If this is getting up to 90%. That leaves 10 to 20% of their income left over for everything else. There's lots of long-term trends of people getting richer and living longer, and I think that's going to spread to the whole world over the next 15 years. Matt Ridley's book outlines some of this argument looking at how rich people are today. Even people that are classified as poor have all these things that no one had 100 years ago. That doesn't necessarily mean they're not still suffering for being poor because there are other things that certainly make your life difficult if you're poor. But they're having all sorts of things that the richest people 50 years ago did not have. I want to look at why that happens. Why has there been so much progress? Why am I confident that it's going to continue? There was an article out last fall looking at the breakthroughs in invention. They got a group of people that they surveyed to try to identify the 50 greatest breakthroughs. One of them was George Dyson, was one of their panelists, who. I think a few of you went to his talk. But they were people that were selected as knowledgeable about invention with some credibility. It's certainly still a fairly subjective thing to decide what the 50 greatest inventions are. These are what they came up with. I've plotted them. Here's the year, 4000 BC up till today. This is the rank. So number one would be here. So you can look at what those inventions were. So there's some things that are earlier then show up on this graph. So the first one on this graph is the wheel. Wheel is a pretty useful invention. Language is probably the most useful invention that goes back 
for this graph. And it's a little tougher to identify when that was invented. And cooking is the earliest one on their list, going back about 400,000 years. Cooking was also pretty important for making it so we could get our nutrition fast enough to start having time for some other things. If you look at this, you'll notice that the vast majority of things are over here. Do we think that's because the people who fill in these surveys were biased or because the rate of progress increases? Well, maybe we should look more closely so we can zoom in on the last thousand years. Zooming in on the last millennium, we see a similar pattern. The density of improvements keeps increasing as we get closer to the present. So the one that's number one, the number one ranked invention, is this one. Do you know what that is? Yeah, the printing press. Good. So that was in the 1400s, that was the printing press. What impact do we think that has on the rate of progress? Yeah. A very large one. Okay, good. Positive or negative? Yeah, right. So why the printing press was number one is really, well, it enabled all of this other acceleration. It made it inexpensive to reproduce information and distribute it. If you took the cost of a book down by a factor of a thousand, now all of a sudden, a much higher fraction of the world's population have access to books and information can spread. That is what eventually leads to this big acceleration. But there's still a big gap and there's lots of reasons for that gap. But all of the other inventions also lead to other things being easier. So the number two invention on their list was electricity, which enables lots of things, right? The first thing it enables that makes it so people can invent more is we've got electric light now. Once you have light, you can work later and people can work on other inventions for longer times. But it's also, electricity itself is necessary for computing, necessary for radios, necessary for all of these other inventions. So that's really what's causing this acceleration, that each invention is able to use all the previous ones to create itself. So the semiconductor depended on electricity, it's certainly also dependent on the printing press. The internet definitely depended on all of these things. Personal computers also did. All of these things build on previous inventions, and that's the real reason why we see this big acceleration. So my third prediction is that that's going to continue. We will see inventions over the next 15 years that will change the world at least as much as these three that we looked at did in the past 30. It's hard to imagine what those are and how they'll change the world. Those are hard predictions to make. I think it's fairly easy to make the prediction that there will be such inventions. Whether they'll be drones delivering packages or being able to do 3D printing. I think 3D printing was something many of you mentioned and that seems like something that's on the threshold of becoming really widespread and really impactful and able to do things that we can't imagine today and that will happen over the next few years. But there will probably be things in the next 15 that are things we have not yet imagined.